Hey guys, in this video, we'll be building out the functionality for saving our form data to the database. So up until now, what we've accomplished was that we built our database one, we imported a data model into our project to represent our database. And then we looked at how we actually invoke a connection to the database. So in our previous lesson, we would have initialized the object that connects to our database, we we made a reference to it or we declared it and then we initialized it in the constructor. And then down here in the form one load function, we would have run our first query using a link. And so I'm just showing you that this is the same as saying select star from types of cars. That is the same thing as this line. And then we just filled up the combo box with a list of cars in the database. Now the expectation is that when we click submit, and let me just show you a preview of the form. When we click submit, the expectation is that we're going to be saving the data that was entered to our form. All right, so I'm going to modify the code a bit. So we have a button click event that we've been using to get the data from the form. All right, and then do some validations. And then if it's valid, then we display a message. If not, then we display a, well, if it's valid, then we display a favorable message. If it's not, then we display error messages. All right, so what we're going to do is modify the is valid portion. So if it is valid, then I want to save the data and then I can display the message. If I can't save the data, then clearly I don't want to display the message. So when we want to save data, we need to declare an object of the type of, let me see how best I can explain this. So when I go back to my model, so if you, you know, you close the model by accident, that's fine. You just go back to solution explorer and then you see the dot edmx file. So you can just double click that and relaunch your model. All right. Now, whatever the box's name is, it usually matches the name of the table. All right. So you see the box there, you see car rental record. You see this one is types of car. And if I look in the solution explorer, if I drop down the EDMX the, uh, file, then you'll see that you have a dot CS files per table. So you have car rental record and you have types of cars. No types of car. Sorry. So those files represent class files that represent your table. These are classes that are directly mapping every field in your table. So when we did the car rental record, we know we set up an ID, customer name, date rented, all of the fields that we put in the database are right here in our class file. So the cool thing about this process and using link and adio.net is that I can create a new object of this class type and then I can save this object into the database. All right, so let's go through this step by step. The first thing I want to do is in the block that says is valid, I want to declare a new object and I'm going to say var rental record is equal to a new instance of car rental record, right? So once again, this class directly matches the car rental record table that we created. Here are all the fields that are available to us and they directly match the columns that are in our database, which means that I need to fill these fields with the data that I intend to store inside of the database fields, all right? So, well, all of them with the exception of ID because we created ID to be auto increment, so I don't need to provide a value for ID, but customer name is going to be entered in on the form. Let me go to the design. Customer name is going to be entered into the form. In the code behind, we're already collecting the customer name and storing it in a variable customer name. And so what I'm going to do is try and map whatever value is being stored in this variable map it into my new rental record of type car rental record, all right? So now that I have my object that represents my table, I'm going to say that the rental record dot 
customer name field. So the customer name field in my table should now have the value of the customer name value that I just collected from my form. All right, so once again, this is the table, this is the text box, sorry, storing customer name in the win forms. I'm collecting the text and I'm storing it in my local variable called customer name. Now, now that I've collected it locally, I want to push it to the database. I'm going to declare an object of the table that I intend to fill with the data. And then I'm going to say that this object's field called customer name, which directly maps to the database field, I want it to have the value coming from my WinForms application, all right? And then I'm going to repeat that process for every other one. So rental record dot date rented is going to be equal to, and which field, what do I have storing date rented? Date rented value is being stored in my variable date out. So I kind of deliberately named them kind of sparsely so that you could see the difference and not get confused. So date rented is going to have the value that is stored inside of date out, right? In the same way, and I just did control D to duplicate that line, date returned is going to have the value that is being stored in date in. All right, so you just build out your, your model. So for every field, that you intend to store data for in your database for every field that is now present in your object you just fill them up with the corresponding data right so rental record dot and then the next one would be cost that is equal to my variable cost and then the final one is the car data so now i have a little error here with my cost. So I'm storing cost as double, but then the class type is decimal because I declared it as decimal inside of my database. All right, so cost is decimal. All right, let me just see. Oh, I could have used float. So I could change the data type here just to make it okay, but it's probably easier I just cast it here. So I can probably say something like, decimal dot and then i will just do a parse so decimal dot parse and i'm parsing cost all right and that will take care of okay slight miscalculation there that did not take care of that because the parse function is expecting a string and i'm passing in a double so let's regather our thoughts i think maybe i can use an implicit cast here and just say decimal, let's see if that works. So sometimes you can actually do a casting like this. So we looked at two other ways to do casting. You can do data type dot parse, or you can say convert dot to, and we use one of those functions. Here's another way to do a casting. So you just use parentheses, the data type you want to cast to, and then the value comes afterwards, right? This works sometimes. So situationally, you just find the one that works and you move along, right? So now we have the cost and the final value that we need to go into our table, which is coming from our WinForms would be the type of car ID, right? So the type of car ID is an integer because it is the foreign key value that needs to map back to the primary key value of the car, which is one, two, one, two, three, four, five, based on the data that we have here. So we already know that we're loading up the combo box with the name and the ID, but what we're collecting from the combo box is the text. So if I look at it, I'm really collecting the text I need to collect the actual ID behind the combo box. So to get the selected value, literally the combo box is going to have a property called selected value, right? So I'm going to go back down here to my type of car ID, and then I'm going to say CB type of car. So this is my combo box property, oh, sorry, this is my combo box control, right? And then I say dot, 
then I'm going to see that there is a property that says selected value. So I can scroll through if I'm not sure how to type it, but selected value. All right. And then you think that that solves it, but if you hover over it, you notice that this is just a generic object type and we're trying to insert it into an integer. So we can use another implicit uh, data type conversion there where we just say open bracket, give me an interpretation of whatever the selected value is. And the selected value once again would be whatever value is mapped to the item that is selected based on the fact that we have value member being ID, all right? So what I'm going to do is create a breakpoint on the is valid, and then I'm going to run, and then we're going to step through and just see how our table object gets filled out. All right, so I filled it out already. Customer name is test user, cost is 2,500. Uh, let me change the dates so that we don't violate any of the validation. And I'm going to go with buggy. So I'm going to click submit. We hit our breakpoint. Is valid is true. So we can just use F11 to step through. And then we see here, one, we're declaring an object that represents our table. All right. So now we've declared the object. Now we start filling it. And I'm just going to step through down to type of car ID. And if I hover over my object and just drill down into it, you see all of the values. Cost got set, test user got set, the two dates got set, the type of car ID is not set yet because I stopped on that line. So if I press F11 and it goes beyond that line, then you can see that the type of car ID is three. All right, so that is how you get the actual ID that matches the value that was selected from the drop down. Once again, that's important because we're actually going to be storing the ID instead of the actual name of the car. All right. And so I can just press F5 and we go on to see our success message. Now, when I look in the database, I'm not going to see the data. All right. So let me just do it and show you. So when I select top 1000 rows from this table, I'm not going to see the data in this table because, well, we didn't really save. So we filled up the table, but we didn't do anything with the data that we filled it up with. So I'm going to come out of debug mode and then we're going to finish up what we need to do. So now that I have filled the table object with all of the data it needs, I now need to pass it over to the database and then save. And that, that's really two steps, all right? So I'm just going to say something like, and let me just remind myself of the name of the database con, um, object. So car rental entities, that represents my database. So I'm going to say car rental entities dot, and then the name of the table or collection of records from the table is car rental records. Then I say dot again. Now I'm going to add. And then what I'm adding is, and it's expecting an object of car rental record. Guess what? I have an object of car rental record type in the form of rental record, right? So I created the object rental record. It is of type car rental record, which matches the table. And so I'm going to add this object that I just built, just finished you know, constructing and putting all the data in. I'm just adding it to the collection of records for that table. All right. And then I'm going to say database. I want to save changes. Now, once I do those two lines and then I click start again, I'm going to fill out the form, make sure everything is valid and then click submit. And then let's step through one more time. So I'm just going to do F11 through all these lines and then that's filling our object. So if I hover over the object, once again, look at the data, then I'm going to see that the relevant fields are filled. You see one with null and later on, we'll get to why that is null and why it doesn't matter at the time we're creating the object or creating the record. It doesn't matter that this is null and it doesn't matter that this is zero since I'm creating because it's going to 
auto increment anyway right and then i'm going to f11 so it now gets to the part where it's adding it to the collection we f11 and then we save changes and then it moves on to the next line so i'm just going to f5 and then we see our our you know success message and we click ok but then we see we saw all of that before what we're looking for that's different now is the actual record being in our database so if i go back over to sql management studio and i rerun this query where i select the items from the table then i'm going to see my record in the database and if you look you see that we have one as the id because once again auto increment the customer name which was a poor attempt at spelling the word test and we have the date rented the date returned the cost and the type of car id and once again this id matches back to our record so i can't have id six if there is no six and that's why binding the combo box like we did at, uh, at the form load that's why binding it is very important all right so as many times as we fill out this form and put in information and submit the expectation is that it will create a new record fill the record with the data and then save it all right In our next video, we'll look at building out other windows so that we can see, you know, like the types of cars that are in the database as well as the rental records in the database. We won't be designing or writing the logic yet. We'll just be looking at extending the design of our application from just one form to maybe many forms that can show us the data that we want.